folks i welcome you all on this next session in the video lecture series on rpa today we are going to discuss about project organization in ui path and in this topic we are going to learn how many templates are available in ui path to create our own workflows so let's start this session so for small processes automated or parts of larger automation project there are four options of layout so basically ui path provides four options to create your workflows these are options as well as templates which can be used just to uh, define the design or structure of your workflow so the very first and most popular layout of ui path studio is sequence second one is flow chart third is state machine and fourth is global exception handler let, let us discuss these four layouts one by one the very first layout sequence let us first understand when to use it when there is clear succession of steps without too many conditions for example a ui automation or user interface automation usually sequences are used to nest 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 workflows and the high level logic is handled through flow chart or state machine talking about the advantages it's easy to understand and follow having a top down top to bottom approach great for simple logic like searching an item on the internet so these are the advantages of sequence talking about disadvantages of the sequences are nesting too many conditions in the same sequence makes the process hard to read sequence is not suitable for continuous flows talking more about sequences so sequences can be defined as this sequences are smallest type of project they are suitable to linear processes as they are enable you to go from one activity to another seamlessly and act as a single block activity one of the key feature of sequences is that they can be reused time and again as a stand alone automation or as a part of state machine or flow chart i'll quickly show you how you can create a new sequence in your ui path studio i'm switching my screen to ui path studio suppose if you are on this page we are on design tab once you click on new you will find four options sequence flow chart state machine and global handler suppose if you want to choose sequence as your layout you have to click on sequence and here you can name that sequence any name you can give and here you can choose the path where you want to save that sequence and once you say create it will create a new sequence and once the new sequence is created you can drag and drop any number of activities from the activity panel just like this so that it will create a new workflow for you by giving the right properties by mentioning the right properties or by giving the proper inputs to these activities this is how a sequence can be designed coming back to the presentation sequences looks like this as as already we have seen it in the uh, ui path studio sequences this is the the name of the sequence is main and here we have we can see three input dialog activities which are dragged and dropped here and which are configured here along with one message box here this is how a sequence looks like moving ahead the next type of template we have in ui path is flow charts when to use it when you have a complex flow with several conditions a flow chart is at least visually much easier to understand and follow when you need to need a flow that runs continuously or that terminates only in several conditions you go for flow charts talking about the advantages of flow chart easy to understand as it is similar to the logic diagram in software computing and second is can be used for continuous workflows talking about the disadvantages flow chart can be used only as general workflows with sequence nested inside not for individual parts of the project so basically the disadvantage of flow chart is it cannot be it can be it can be used for uh, for uh, individual as an individual uh, project layout but you cannot nest any flow chart inside any sequence or inside any state machine to understand more about flow chart let's go through this definition flow chart can be used in a variety of settings from large jobs to small projects that you can reuse in the pro other projects 
the most important aspect of flowchart is that unlike sequences they present multiple branching logical operators that enables you to create complex business processes and connect activities in multiple ways flowcharts come with auto arrange option in context menu let me show you how flowchart looks like this is how a flowchart looks like suppose if you have created a flowchart where you have used an assign activity here after assigning some values using assign activity you are you want to execute input dialog after taking some input from the user suppose you want to take decision in true or false if it is true you want to print something in the message box if it is false you want to go again to a decision uh, parameter and here you can decide whether you have to go here or you are, you have to go here so this is how you can use flowchart in different use cases i'll just show you how you can create a new flowchart again you have to click on new button and once you click on new button you have to select this option called flowchart and here you can name the flowchart i am naming it flowchart demo and once you say create this blank flowchart will appear in front of you now this flowchart can be used directly for dragging and dropping the activities and you have to first of all connect the first activity you want to execute with this start node once you connect this as a start node this activity will be executed first and after that you can decide how many activities you want to execute one after another and you have to connect these activities with each other so that in this flow all the activities will get executed this is how a flow chart can be created by dragging and dropping multiple activities from activity panel to designer panel moving ahead the third type of template we have or ui path provide is called state machine when to use it first of all let's understand what a state machine is it's it is an abstract machine consisting of a finite number of predefined states and transition between these states at any point based on external inputs and conditions verified it can be in only one of these states state machines can be used with a finite number of clear and stable states to go through some examples from the daily life include vending machine elevator or traffic lights so basically state machine comes with predefined states and the main component or main concept behind state machine is moving from one state to another using some transaction or transition talking more about state machine it is a type of automation that uses a finite number of states in its execution it can go into a state when it is triggered by an activity and it exists in that state when another activity is triggered i would like to sh uh, show you this state machine with an example so let us understand the concept of state machine through this example i'm explaining you the concept of air condition where suppose the ac or the air condition is switched off so currently the state of that air condition is this switched off once you press a green button a transition will happen and your ac will be turned on so your ac is making a transition from off to on and from idle to working condition once it is in working condition it will check the room temperature and it will check the temperature which you have set the temperature which you have already set using your remote control if the room temperature if the room temperature is greater than set temperature then it will start cooling down and if the room temperature is less than the set temperature it will start 
heating. So on the basis of this condition, it is moving from one state to another state. Again, when it is cool and when the temperature, the set temperature is achieved by air condition, it will again start heating or it will again go in the idle state. So here in this problem, we have multiple states and we have multiple transitions on the basis of multiple conditions. So the, when we have scenarios like this, when we have complex scenarios like this, we opt for a layout called state machine. Let us move back to our presentation. So let us see how a state machine looks like. A state machine looks like this. There are multiple states like final state, entry state, exit state. So these are the states which are available. We very rarely go for state machines because uh, in the practice, we never uh, get a scenario which can be, you know, which can be that complex where we need to use this state machine concept. Talking about the advantages of state machine can be used for continuous workflows that are more complex. Transitions between states can be easily defined and offer flexibility. Can accommodate processes that are more complex and cannot be captured by simple loops and if statements. It is easier to cover all the possible cases, transitions with state machine. What are the disadvantages? Longer development time due to their complexity. Splitting the process into logical states figuring out transitions and so on. And a very important note here, state machines are not to be overused. They should define only the skeleton of the project. In fact, there are templates built upon state machines, specially designed to build the large enterprise automation. And the most commonly project is RE framework. Talking about the fourth one, global exception handler. So the global exception handler is a type of workflow designed to determine the project's behavior when it's encountering an execution error. Only one global exception handler can be set per automation project. So a global exception handler is a layout which by default comes with the exception handling mechanism. So that all the activities you will drop in a global exception handler will be covered in globe in exception handling. And whenever you get error or whenever the exception is thrown, it will work accordingly and it will apply the error handling mechanism on that activity. So this is the fourth type of layout which is available in UiPath Studio. This is how a global exception handler looks like. The, suppose if there are some activities which are which are probable or which are prone to error, we keep them in global exception handler and that will handle the exception on the basis of mechanism which we have mentioned in the try catch activity. So guys, that's all for today's session. Today we have discussed about the layouts which are available in UiPath. We have discussed about four layouts which are available. So you can choose any of the layout from this button, sequence, flowchart, state machine and global handler. We'll be using these layouts in coming sessions for creating our workflows on different scenarios. Bye-bye and take care.